Minister, um, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Brother Minister. Um, That's right. I wanted Martin to make some uh, comments about the program. And so you, you have a five minute piece. We don't have to be done to 1030. We got 10 minutes. If, if we make can we? Uh, thank you. This is Brother Martin Muhammad, who's one of our speakers. <laughs> alaikum. Well, alaikum. Well, alaikum. Well, alaikum. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> um, man, I just wanted to say that at Dr. Ridgely's um, encouragement, I came and joined on with uh, Brother Scott and Sister Erica with the SEED program and took up this apprenticeship program. I just come out of a divorce and uh, I said I want to do something different. So I came down, I put my hands in the dirt and I started getting back focused. Mm. And uh, a part of the SEED program is the character development piece where every morning we meet and we go through uh, a particular training based upon uh, the training that Reverend Bevel gave in the atonement process, the same thing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan introduced to the world at Atonement Day in 1995. These are things that we shouldn't forget that we should take into ourselves uh, every day and we can do things. I grew up uh, I was born in Derrida, Louisiana. I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, right down the road. Upon graduating high school, I went out to Los Angeles. And uh, I got trained by some great captains. You know, Brother Captain Oliver, Shaheed, uh, 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 was taught by uh, Captain Wali, Captain Haleen. Mm -hmm. And uh, through those men, I learned like what Book, uh, Booker T. Washington is talking about. Work. You learn how to work. Mm -hmm. See, work is a four-letter word, but we don't have to feel like we're getting cussed out. <laughs> it's okay. This is what we, but this is what we have to do today. We. There's a work that has to be done. That's right. The minister is talking about the time and what must be done, but we have right. to be the ones to do it. Mm -hmm. Myself personally, you know, I've always, my mama told me, you, you got a big mouth. You know, and I've been outspoken, you know, pretty much since I was three years old. <laughs> and uh, at times that's gotten me in trouble, but right now, you know, it, the, the time for talking is over, and we have to do some work. So I came, put my hands in the dirt, learned uh, the agricultural practices. You know, I'm, I'm in the city. I'm running around, you know, with gangbangers in, in, in the streets. And I'm like, my only thing I knew about farming was that my grandfather was a landowner. He had 90 acres right over in, uh, in, in Leesville, Louisiana. And um, we would go there as, as little boys. And he had, he had cattle, he had hogs, he had chickens, he had ducks. And he had fields of food for days. And this is what I remember going to as a little boy. And uh, all of my cousins, we would all visit there. Well, 20 years ago, my grandfather passed. And nobody in my family seemed to, you know, care about the land. But before my grandfather passed, he told everybody, don't sell the land. Mm -hmm. And that's the one instruction, by the grace of Allah, that my family uh, recalled and didn't do. They didn't sell the land. So for the last 10 years, I've been asking, let me do something with it. Let me do something with it. And I've been rejected and rejected and rejected. But a uh, turn of events happened, my uh, aunt passed, and they realized that nobody else cared anything about it. So on October 16th, I think it was 2011, whatever, which, whatever it was, it was Atonement Day in Philly. I couldn't make it to Philly because that day my family had joined right there at the land and they turned the land over to me. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Since then, 
then I went up and I started my security company and, you know, it was thriving. But I had to get to the land because it went 20 years being non-productive. So we had to take that non-productive land and turn it into some producing land. So now I've cleared 20 years of growth, uh, 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 52, 52 acres of it, and preparing to till up that field and plant crops. But what I'm also doing is like with uh, what the minister has urged us to do is animal husbandry. Right now I currently have over 60 uh, heritage breed chickens. Uh, within the next two months, uh, uh, within the next two months, I'll have uh, hair uh, hair sheep. I'll be uh, acquiring some Black Angus cattle. I also have some Royal Palm turkeys, mm. and uh, mm. I have Muscovy ducks. And mm. So we're gonna have a lot of eggs, and we're gonna have some good meat. <laughs> but this is this is what I'm saying. This is the work that has to be done, and you know we can't talk about it. We gotta be about it. And That's really when the people, it, but it's not an easy thing. When I came back to claim the land, I just want to share this, that the, the people that were there for over 20 years that had been in the surrounding area, they had been looking at the land. And they had basically laid claim to it mm -hmm. as if it was theirs, mm -hmm. the Caucasians. Mm -hmm had laid claim to it. So when I was there, they were everywhere. They had hunting stands set up. They were all up in trees. And I'm walking around. They're jumping out on me. They got machetes and guns and, and everything else. And they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> so that piece is that part where I learned very quickly it's a different breed of politics in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, you know, so I had to learn this little piece that the minister was just speaking of, that we have to protect mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what we own. That's what we're and that's when the Second Amendment comes. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 so one of the things that I'm doing, I learned in, 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 in trying to network and with, with the people in the area and acquire the resources, um, is that southern people like to hunt. So, and, you know, we're not all Muslim. We have to learn how to unite with our Christian family. They like to hunt. So one of the things that I came up with is I'm, we started a hunting club. Right called Game Gods Hunting, Farming, and Fishing Club. And I have young people and older people who were teaching the art of hunting, archery, and uh, farming. So that's one thing that we're doing in Louisiana. And due to the fact that they've seen the work and the progress that we're making, other people have come to me. Oh, wow, we see what you're doing. I've ha I have land over here. Would you like that? They're offering us land. A brother just offered me 200 acres right up the road uh, just two days ago. Mm -hmm. I'm a little overwhelmed, but when you get busy, it has that avalanche effect. <laughs> 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 so, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, they have a classroom coming in now. Uh, they have a classroom coming in now. Yes. Well, we, we're going to be able to take this up Speaking later. Chief Fraser. Go right ahead now. Because I do want to hear um, and the rest of our senior staff exactly where you're going into. So please forgive me. Brother, God, if I may, if we run out of time, I want to ask you this question. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chief Fraser, but I'm sitting here inspired by what I heard in the song. And I wanted to make a comment. Mm -hmm. if, if this is not the time or the place, but there's so much that has come to my mind just looking at you and listening to you and Bishop and Brother. And I 